All right, Shalawan. We the Hebrew Israelites. We're out here in downtown uh, Memphis, Tennessee, out here in uh, Court Square Park. Here to bring forth the gospel of the Heavenly Father, which is the good news to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. That the Most High is going to go ahead and return the destroyed condition of his people to its true natural state as being back on top in his glory and in his image. And when I say the Lord's people, the Almighty's people, I'm referring to the 12 tribes of Israel, which consists of primarily so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and even going to the strangers, the foreigners of Israel, among the confusion of faiths scattered abroad around the four corners of the earth, east, west, north, and south. The Most High is going to bring us back to our full restoration by giving us the 600 plus commandments to abide with, which is the reason why we have our people in the condition they're currently in with they, the currently within today. Our people are in poverty, our people are, are sickened mentally, physically, our people have all kinds of diseases, our people are brainwashed by the BS philosophies of this world, our people are selfish, they're ignorant, they're stupid, and even worse than just being stupid, they're deliberately stupid. They like to be intellectually lazy, man, all right? And pretty soon the Lord's going to bring an end to that, which is why that's the good news. Because for the ones who do get themselves right by obeying the, the, this book right here, the Holy Bible, the Word of the Lord, look what we got. Pretty much, the ones that do obey this book, this Word right here, man, which is uh, the 1611 KJV Bible, the true accurate translation of the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin into the English. The only Bible you should be dealing with is the KJV. Show me the pocket. And that apocrypha right there, once you learn about these laws, the good, righteous proverbs, in these two books right here, man, guess what? The Lord is dealing with you. Wait, how's it going? And when you apply that to your life, guess what? The Lord is going to make your life better. He's going to make you to be in the condition of being deemable for salvation when the time does come. Because according to this good news, the ones who do repent are going to be saved for the destruction known as Judgment Day, Armageddon in the Bible, World War III, soon to come. But the ones who don't go ahead and get their stuff together, they don't get that act right, the Lord is going to destroy them. As, like it says in the scriptures, in the scriptures, a destruction from the Almighty. I mean, the Lord is going to bring a, a terrible condemnation to them. I mean, he's going to kill them by pain unheard of, man. All right? That's the judgment the Lord is going to bring here to the earth real soon. He's going to bring it by famine. He's going to bring it by disease. He's going to bring it by murdering in the streets when the economy has crashed and there's no more food. So everybody is on a killing frenzy. For the last amounts of food they could possibly find in the possession of other people okay and ultimately uh the fire the second death i uh, did talk about the end of the road it's going to come by fire what you call this nuclear war that's going to be uh that's going to be found out about in world war three which world war three is in the bible known as the prophecy of armageddon that's soon to come man and that's why great fear of the lord we come out here to teach this gospel to you brothers as you should be out here teaching this world too if you learn the commandments, you learn how to teach the prophecies, you get the word in for the most high, Lord willing, to please the Lord and to also get salvation as well too, Lord willing. So before we go into the lesson, we want to say all praises and glory is given to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of great Melstone GMS, the only men who are laboring in that rural world with the sound doctrine, the apostles, elders of uh, uh, GMS. And also salutation, props, and honesty, brothers out there who push in sincerity and faith in the image, Lord willing, of the elect. We say Shalom. Let me go ahead and uh, get Ezekiel, the seventh chapter. Yeah. Hey, because you know, we out here, man, and we, we got colds and all that. But that don't mean that since we got colds, we're feeling kind of sick, got runny noses and all that, our nose all congested, that you're not supposed to come out here and teach. The Lord is going to bring an end, man. Seven chapter, uh, in about, in about the third verse. This is Ezekiel chapter seven, verse three. Now is the end come upon thee, and will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to the thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine uh, abominations. we read that over. Read a little bit more louder, brother, for the camera. Now is the end come upon thee. Read a little bit more louder. I put some bass in it, brother. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, 
and I will judge thee according to thy ways. That's right. Most High is going to bring an end. So that's more important that we come out here regardless of what condition that we may be in that can hinder us from getting out here to teach. Whether being under a sickness, an ailment, you know, uh, so-called having to work. You can go ahead and apply for a job where you don't got to worry about uh, not, not checking in, not logging in to work, you know, on Saturdays or the weekends for that matter. You'll be able to come out here to teach. You're not supposed to be worried about the family matters of this world, about your wife or your parents or your children. They want you to go out and do some shit of the world, like go out to a function, go out to a party, go out to a family reunion, go out of the state, go out of town and all that for some type of little vacation trip, little bullshit ass adventure. You're supposed to come out here faithfully every week, once a week, whenever you possibly can, Lord willing, to push the word of the most high. And there's no really, there's no really no excuse to be taking breaks or to be missing weeks, because you got seven days you can come out here and teach. You could get off work or get out of school and come out here and teach, man. You know, you could put in one hour, two hours. Really, it should be longer than that, but like for a minimum, you could put like two hours, hour and a half, two hours out of pushing the, the work of the most high, pushing this gospel. Because also in the gospel, also in the good news, you got the condemnation, not only to two thirds of Israel who won't repent, Ignorant as Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans who are who are adamant and committing sins and breaking the Lord's six hundred plus commandments, the Mosai is going to bring down the heathens as well too. He's going to bring down Esau, the so-called or well, the Caucasian race. He's going to bring down these other nations that fall underneath Esau but are still above you Israelites, you tribes. All right, that includes the Arabians, the East Indians, the Japanese, the Chinese. The Mongoloids out there in the east, basically Chinese, Japanese, uh, Filipinos. Look at that girl over there. <laughs> at the Filipinos and all that, man. Uh, uh, them uh, Indonesians. All of them are basically heathens that are going to be given unto condemnation. They're going to be judged and brought of their power. Because why is Israel, why, why are they always in the lowest predicaments, the lowest condition, the lowest form of living all around the whole entire globe? A few can make it into middle class. A very small, if you can make it in the high class, predominantly they're in the lower middle class, and they're in they're in the, they're in the upper low class, or mostly in that low ass class, man. All right, that even includes the foreigners as well too, the so-called uh, white Israelites, so-called East Indian Arabian Israelites, so-called Asian Israelites that look like other other nations, that look like heathens, but are really descended back to so-called black men. You know, you know them by their spirit because they're out of the curses as well too. You got a lot of them so-called European Caucasian, so-called Caucasian Israelites that live in mobile homes and trailer homes, living real fucked up out in the country, all right? You got certain uh, uh, Asian and Islander Jakes that are from the Pacific. They live in a hood with Judah and Issachar and the rest of the tribes living all messed up, living around cockroaches and, and rats in the projects. So Israel is always in that low-ass level, but the other nations that are really those actual nations are always above them. That's the good news that the places are going to be switched around. There's going to be a changing of places, man. Like the movie uh, with uh, with, uh, with Eddie Murphy, he traded position of being a king for a period of time, went into being a peasant, a low-level servant, and he was re-given back into that position of being a king all over again. That's how it was for, for our forefathers back in the ancient world, back in the time of King David, King Solomon, King Josiah, King Hezekiah, and so forth on, etc. with the other righteous kings. We were in a high level above all the other nations. But when we sinned, we had wicked ass rulers, like these wicked ass idiotic niggas in the hip hop, entertainment, rap industry, the music industry, within the sports realm. They influenced our people to be wicked, to be selfish, to commit all kinds of sins, to be uh, sexually uh, explicit into the, into the forms of perversion, all right? Putting tattoos all over their bodies and all that, man. And basically even being a whole bunch of goddamn faggots, a whole bunch of homosexual sodomites as well too. But see, the Lord's gonna he's gonna do away with that. He's gonna bring the righteous rulers back on top again. He's gonna do away with all the wicked that goes with two thirds of Israel. That goes with the the white, the so-called white Caucasian man, Esau the devil. That goes with the other foreign heathen nations, the Arabians, the Asians, the Africans, so forth on, etc. If you're not part of the twelve tribes or the Negroes who were brought here in the cargo slave ships, or you descend to those Negroes that were, that were in the cargo slave ships in other parts of the earth, or if you're not among the so-called stock of the Native Americans, the United Israelite. Your, your forefather lines got to trace back to either Negro or the Indian descent. And 
you can't tell that you are you can see it by the spirit, man. You be able to tell by the spiritual uh, traits upon people, their character traits, or who they really are, or whether they, they whether they're your enemy, or whether they're of your people and your enemy, or whether they be of your people and your friend, but look like a foreigner. Like for example, for instance, this brother right here, he looks like a foreigner, but he's not a foreigner though. All right, go back to the scripture. Right? Like I said, my Point B, we coming to the end, so the gospel got to get out. Read off from verse 4 again. Paul calling the reading, Ezekiel 7 and 4. This is Ezekiel 7, verse 4. That's right, raise your voice up. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways. The Most High is going to recompense the ways of the whole entire globe. But beginning with two thirds of Israel, because it tell you in the New Testament, that when the Lord does his purging process, he's going to start in his household. What better to start with the household, to start with the, the infighting, the interior issues, all right, than deal with the issues on the outside. Don't you worry about a paint job when your damn engine is broke, when your radiator is cracked, all right? When, when, when you ain't had a change in oil. Don't you worry about the outside, worrying about getting a paint job when your car is fucked up on the inside. Fix the inside and later go ahead and hook up the car on the outside. That's how it is with Israel. The Most High is going to deal with his people first, and he's going to go ahead and judge and torment and punish the other nations for all their evil, wicked, wrong doings, for all the sins they commit. But first, Israel's sins are going to be put on the forefront to be judged first, man. Read on. And thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. The abominations of Israel and every nation upon the planet is, is plenteous. It's that many right now. It's at its highest peak of being a worse than it ever was ever in history. Back to the time of the Babylonians, the first ancient empire of Babylon, they were doing a whole lot of wickedness. But all the wickedness is so, is so high now that it's actually being accepted by the masses, even by people who know better, referring to you Israelites who have the natural conscience towards the Most High, like it says in Romans, I think the second or third chapter. All right, because you would know an Israelite by the spirit, they naturally have the law inside them. Like, for instance, to hate homosexuals or to hate lesbians. That's a natural spirit of, of Israel. But see, with Esau, with the Caucasians, and certain other nations, they don't really even care if there's a homosexual or not that's, that's living, that's breeding among them. With Israel, that's a whole nother story, though, man. A real Israelite man in this right state of mind with that decent enough righteous portion spirit, that righteous portion of the spirit of the Most High on him, he's going to go ahead, he's going to hate homosexuals and lesbians. And that's one of the main abominations here right now. The Most High, like the brother's written in the scripture, he's going, he's going to bring that about and destroy you because of it. And many other things. Read on. Thus saith the Lord God, an evil and only evil, behold, is, is come. That's right. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and jump real quick to jump real quick to uh, Matthew 24. You know what? Before we go to Matthew 24, go uh, let me see your phone real quick. Go to Matthew 24. I'm going to look up a scripture real quick on your phone. Go to Matthew 24, begin at the first verse. I see you got the blue letter on it. Fourth verse. First verse. This is Matthew 24. And Yehoshai went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Yehoshai said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. I always do this every time, because for example, all these buildings around the whole entire globe, all of these buildings are made out of what? They're made out of stones, man. They're made out of the rocks, the elements of the earth. And what the Lord was saying, because that's a prelude to the prophecies he's about to go into, the Lord is basically saying when that time come, in the end times, you're not going to have here one stone upon another. All these buildings around the, the world, all these monoliths are going to be brought down. They're going to be destroyed. They're going to be brought to naught. Okay? How's it going, man? How's, hey, peace. How's it going, man? I'm all right. Yeah. I'll come check you out for a minute. Well, you saw me over there? Yeah, yeah, I saw you. Yeah. This is a brother. This is a brother I was telling you about, man. He looks like from the other side, but he's us though. He's one of us. He 
He's oh, from the, he's from what the tribe of Benjamin. Tribe of Benjamin, okay. Yeah. Well, he's from Jamaica. Now nah, his roots, his forefather roots, are, are from the Moors who uh, who came out of who came out of uh, the UK or brought as slaves over to Jamaica, to Trinidad, to Tobago, to Guyana, to etc. Okay, say that one more time. Now. His forefathers were the Moors, were the Israelite Moors from the tribe of Benjamin, who were held captive and brought out of basically Ireland, Scotland. Britain and Wales, down there to Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, Guyana, etc. So, with the uh, Benjamites at one time was ruling in Spain? Yeah, they were ruling in Spain, I mean, they were ruling Portugal, they were ruling Ireland, they were ruling. So, then they got in captivity. They ended up in captivity and were brought and down brought... there to Jamaica. Okay. But while they were there, they were getting it in with who? With white women. And so, you have a sea line of Benjamin sure. over there. Sure. Because they teach you in American society that. If you go ahead and you so called mix your seed with another race of woman or whatever, then then that child, you know, it, it has no nationality. It's a it's a mixed child. There's no such, there's such thing as mixed. I'm with you on that. You I'm, know, I'm, yep. Most Israelites teach that. Most of them that I've seen. Yeah. They teach that. They they pretty much consistent on that. Yeah. Most of them are. Real quick, get uh Genesis the first chapter, verse eleven to twelve. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get you wisdom, Solomon. What, What's up? Peace, Israelite. y'all. What's your name, man? Israelite man. Uh, is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What's your name again? Saab. Saab. Z A A B. A B. Yeah, it means wolf in Hebrew. Like Benjamin shall be a ravenous wolf. Did you name yourself that one, or somebody gave it to you? I named myself. This is Genesis one, verse eleven and twelve. And God said, "Let the earth bring forth the grass and her yielding seed." In the fruit tree, yielding fruit after its kind, yep. whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought up, brought forth grass in her yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. That's the point. The seed is wood and its fruit after itself within its kind. It's after itself. If you replace if you replace uh, a fruit and herb with actual like you know uh, a seed or, or sperm cell or nation nationality, you put it all together. What it's basically saying, you got a seed. You understand, but you know for edification for the camera, for brothers know at home watching, you got an apple tree seed. You got a you got a plum tree seed. You got an orange tree seed. You got a a grapefruit tree seed. You go ahead, you plant that seed down here in America. And you kind of okay from the first seed, the first tree sprang up in America. Now you over there in Japan with a seed, with, with a with a seed or a piece of fruit from that tree you first grew in America. You eat the fruit or whatever, do what you do with it. And you, you're supposed to be eating it, but you do what you do with it. And you go ahead, you take the seeds out. You grow the second generation of that tree that was first grown here in America. You'll grow its offspring fruit the second generation out there in Japan. You grow the tree out there, you take the fruit. You go over there to Iran out in the Middle East, do the same thing there. Fruit's gonna grow, you could take your ass out there to South Africa. Same thing's gonna happen. You get that fourth generation tree and it's fruit. You go ahead and take the seed from there, you go out there to uh to Germany. By the time the fifth, sixth generation come around, no matter what country you're in, no matter what place you're at upon the earth, no matter what region, that same fruit is gonna grow, man. So the same thing applies to the seed of mankind, human beings, and even unto animals. So all all biological life life reproducing creatures from uh from from the herbs from the plants to animals to actual human beings you are whatever your father is man regardless of how you physically look because what doesn't change they'll tell you this in science within Esau science is that your genotype is perpetual it's forever but your phenotype which dictates your physical appearance can easily be altered but the genotype is never altered you're gonna always have that same genotype because guess what. Get, uh, 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 we'll get that Samuel 16 and 7 real quick. The Most High, he don't deal about what's on the outside, what's on the physical look. Like I made the example earlier, the little, the little analogy with the car, worry about the inside of the car as opposed to getting a paint job. When you got on the inside of the car, the interior, like the engine and all that, you got it messed up. You got a cracked radiator, your, your oil ain't been changed. It's all messed up on the inside. The Most High is worried about more so on the inside. Because that thing right there, what's on the inside is what actually matters. On the inside, it's what it's whatever that thing on the outside is constituted of. It's what it's made out of. And what's what's on the inside of all things of the living is a spirit. And each spirit is just like a seed. It's after its kind within itself. You can't change a spirit, man. A spirit is, is permanent. 
it's unchangeable. Like energy, which are basically the spirits, it's a, it's a form of spiritual power. Our energy, energy never really fully dissipates. It, ne it never bounds. It'll, it'll just grow stronger or grow weaker, but it never ever actually fully disappears, man. Same thing with the spirit that's inside man, because what's within inside man is, uh, is is the spirit that comes from his father, via sex. Get that up real quick. Samuel what? Uh, 16 and 7. You know, for now, get uh, I'm gonna get that for you. Read uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 3. Go ahead and read it, Rupert. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 3. Go. And when I was. Hey, can you born, guys go back a little bit? Yeah. And when I was yeah, born, I drew in the Thank common you, air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which. Read for the top five. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. Matter of fact, uh, start from the top, start from verse, go, 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 go to jump to verse 2 real quick. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 2. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months being compacted in blood of the seed of man of the seed of man so guess what what does that seed come from the seed of man who produces the seed because it said in Genesis the first chapter verse 11 and 12 that the seed is after a soul within its kind you would think that seed is referring to you know exactly what comes from a fruit what comes out of vegetation the earth trees and grass and other herbs but the word in Hebrew and even in Greek is for too the word in Hebrew is Zerai and that word in Hebrew is for seed. It actually literally means semen, man. It means sperm cell. Because at the center core of a cell, you have what you call a nucleus. And at the center core of a nucleus, you have two protons, two electrons, and two neutrons. And guess what? They're all in motion. Because the Spirit of the Heavenly Father has everything that's living always in motion. If it's not in motion, then guess what? It's dead. It's not living. It's not alive. So when you go ahead and you have sex, you go ahead and reproduce with a woman. You procreate with her. You be forth your procreation with her. Guess what? You passing your seed line within that woman. So with inside that woman, you have a portion of your spirit because that sperm cell is containing a portion, a platform for your spirit to basically grow inside her. So that spirit that grow inside her is not her spirit, but it's that spirit from that man. And so what comes forth from that woman when it's born after nine months is that portion of whatever whatever uh, brought forth that, 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 that spirit, whatever is the father of that spirit. So that proves there's no such thing as being multi-race or being so-called mixed. You are whatever your father is. Read on again, huh? Uh, and when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is like nature. And the, ver the first voice which I uttered was crying, and as all others do. I was, nur I was nursed in... Uh, swaddling clothes and that was and that with cares were you, were you going to read right there that proves that uh that proves that joseph and mary had sex <laughs> because i like, can't King solomon say ain't no other men came through no other way we all have come through through a father besides the heavenly father and not being a stillborn child or whatever that died in the womb you know children are brought forth by procreation that was founded in the roman catholic church when they tell you that you know uh, Joseph and Mary never had sex. It was the Immaculate Conception. It was a dude out here that was out here last week that was bugging out and all that, acting goofy and wild and crazy, talking about Joseph and Mary. They never had sex, and that, that ain't nothing impossible with the Heavenly Father. He could do anything. That could have been possible, but that's not the case though. Prophecy had had to be fulfilled. The Messiah that came that came about was from the King the, was from King David seed line, basically from his genealogy, from okay. his lineage. Well, I got a question. You, you go ahead, brother. Okay, my question is. We know you just showed and explained that the, uh, put it back in. Just let me know when I'm ready. Gotcha. Okay, we know you just explained that, um, seed, children come from the seed of the father. Okay, right? Yeah. All right? Yep. Okay. Come. So, if that's true, then... Why is it considered wrong by some Israelites? I don't know if you if you teach this, but I'm about to find we're about to find out. 
I know where you're going. It's wrong to be with an Edomite woman or a European woman or a Caucasian woman or a Gentile woman if the seed is coming from the man. Something when it pops up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do I need to talk, say it louder or say it again? Uh, you, can, you can bring it louder for the camera. I can hear you though, but bring it louder for the camera. Though. Okay, so. Okay, so we, we know, according to what you just taught, the seed, the children come from the seed of the father. Gone. Through the mama. Yep. All right, through the womb of the mother. If that's true, then why do a lot of, why do many camps or many Israelites teach that you don't supposed to marry outside of your race? Not saying they're wrong, yeah. but why do they teach that if the seed, even if they do get a Gentile or heathen, or a woman of another nation pregnant, this, the child's going to be the seed of the father anyway, or the other Israelite. If Israelite get a, you know, a heathen or Gentile woman's pregnant, you see know what I'm saying? Done. Excuse the how I accident, but. No, that's you, good. Though. I'm just, I'm saying that you're saying. So, so what's, so why, so, so it seemed like, it seemed like it would be okay to marry whoever, or uh, excuse me, uh, uh, marry whoever, as long as she believes yeah. in the creator, the God of Israel. Yeah. It seems like it would be okay to have any woman on the planet. It seems that way, but what those other camps are saying, they're on point. They're correct. They're okay. actually correct. Okay. You're not supposed to be marrying a woman of the other nations. Even if they convert? Even if they convert, because the Lord already made it a law in Ezra. He made an example in Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah. Can you get those scriptures then? When you're free? Uh, when you can. If I, if I can get yeah. it in a second. Yeah. Because it's already a law inside Ezra and Nehemiah. You can read the whole book of Ezra and Nehemiah to get the story. Do it say you can't marry a Gentile woman? You cannot marry a Gentile woman. That's true. That's Is that is that in the book? Yes, yeah, in the book. That's true. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll wait till you see it, till you show it. That, that's true right there. I don't know if I ever saw that. that that's true right there. But I want to get to the point, though. Mm -hmm. There could be concubines, but you can't marry them. You can't go ahead and place them on the same level as an Israelite woman. You can't make them go through the Hebrew custom of the marriage ceremony. Oh, you can't pay twelve bottles of fifty shekels of silver to, to get her in marriage. You cannot withdraw her. Oh, she okay. could be a concubine. I see. You could go ahead and have her as a servant, a slave, and when you want to pop her, if she looks attractive, you can pop her and then send her on her way back to the field to go finish working, like a like a true emperor, a true king. Do you have to commit to a concubine? You don't have to commit to a concubine. What she, if a concubine get pregnant? If she if she, get, she gonna have your child. If she, if I she mean get, the man's child, the, the, the Israelite child. It's yeah. just what I'm saying. It's say an Israelite man yeah. impregnates a concubine that's not a that's, uh, that's not an Israelite woman. She's gonna have the seed of an Israelite in her womb. True that. It's supposed to pull out, man. I'm saying, but what things happen? That's true. Things happen. You got the example of Jephthah. So if you read Second Edges Nehemiah, the children were damaged goods, so they got banished with their mothers because they were already believing in hedonistic philosophy. They were already bouncing away the heathen. They were sodomites, they believed in false gods, they cut markets to their skin being the way to the heathen and all that. They basically were already damaged goods. But you had an example of the account in the Bible of Jephthah. I think Jephthah is spelled G-E-P-H-T-A-H, whose mother was a heathen, but his father was an Israelite. And he lived, I think, in East Manasseh, so he was a Manassite. And basically the other Manassites didn't like him because they said, your mom was a heathen. <laughs> your, your mother's a heathen. Your dad's an Israelite, but your mother is a heathen. You're not like us. You're half an Israelite. Basically, you're Drake. You gotta get your Drake ass up out of here. Yeah, but what happened though? He wound up getting the, the power, didn't he? Yeah, he got he got kicked out. Well, he didn't get kicked out. He ran away because they were bullying him, teasing him so that much. It, it became a nuisance for him. So he left, and the Spirit of the Lord was on him to basically come back because he went to his mother's foreign land. Out there, I think, uh, in Mesopotamia, like uh, either Syria or Iraq, where his mother was from, her uh -huh. native land. Uh -huh. But the Spirit of the Most High hopped up on him because they were having trouble. They were struggling with, with, with the heathen trying to invade their land and beating them in war. He came back and the Spirit of the Lord revealed like, hey, I deal with whoever I want to deal with. If I want to deal with the heathens to, to make them beat you as a punishment for y'all sinning against me and to shame y'all, humiliate y'all before, before me, by him humiliating y'all before the heathens, I'll do that. Same thing was with Jephthah. He made an example. Yeah, his mother's a heathen, but he's still under the line of Israel. His father's an Israelite, and I'm gonna I'm shame him by y'all not by y'all not being humble and accepting him. I'm gonna raise him up to be y'all leader in war. And that's what he did. You, you know the account. Well, I don't remember like you do, but I got an idea. I, I ain't read it in a minute. I probably, ain't, I probably ain't read it in a couple of years, but I still remember that account. I, remember I, I, I went over it several times, and I actually had to use it when someone was saying that 
if your so-called mix that you're not an Israelite, like, I have to deal with that doctor before. Okay, so now that, that's a good example of him. But the, he he wanted to be used by God in a, in a good way. But what about the people in Ezra you was going to mention? Can you show in, that? So, uh, read the people, those? The people in Ezra, the children of Ezra, yeah. they were banished to the heathen mothers because they were already damaged goods. What do you mean already damaged goods? I mean, at that time, they, were, they already soaked up and were fully indoctrinated to the way that he did. Their fathers were Israel. They were in the land and all that. So you're saying there was no way back? There was no way back. They were damaged goods. They, they didn't want to serve the Lord. They wanted to continue their hedonistic ways. So them and their mothers got the food out the okay, land. Okay, okay. They got, they got, they got so they had a back. choice. They had a choice. <laughs> so they had a choice. Those kids, those children had a choice. They chose to go with the ways of their uh, heathen mama. They, they, they left with their mothers. Okay. They were kicked out of the land. They were banished out of the land. They didn't try to stay. They left with their mothers. So they was old enough to make a choice. They, they weren't like one or two or three years old. Yeah, they, they ordered to make a choice and their ass got on. They left with the heathen mothers to continue being heathen around. You know, that's even prophecy with the most side because Israel, uh, James 1 and 8, James 1 and 1, I mean, they're going to be scattered abroad around the whole entire earth. So they left with the heathen mothers right back into their homelands among the Hamites, among the Edomites, among the Moabites, and they kept on procreating with those women. And that's why you got brothers like this right here. He looks like a so called white person, but really, he an Israelite by his seed mark. You got like Bruce Lee. He looked like a he looked like a gook, but he ain't no gook though. He really one of us. I was telling somebody. I was like I, before I even got man. I was like man. Bruce Lee might be an Israelite, y'all. Yeah, y'all better leave him alone, yeah, he man. He's Israelite, man. In fact, he's from the warrior tribe because the Moabites back in the ancient world, their land was next to Reuben, the Seminole Indians, which are a warrior tribe. The Seminole Indians are a warrior tribe that never got defeated by the so-called white man's military. So among them Chinese, they're the baddest motherfuckers in martial arts there is. You know, that's where Bruce Lee is from. He's that portion. Which from one? Which one he's from? For, uh, for China. Uh -huh. He's he's a, he's that portion from among those groups to where he's actually an Israelite, though he looks like a group. You know, he's really one of us. He had the style. He had the rhythm. He had the soul. He had the salt. He loved he loved Muhammad Ali. He wanted to actually spar. He looked up to Muhammad Ali. I was and, and, oh, and, well, he didn't would look up to us. I was talking to a brother about that. Yeah. Before I got, you know, and I was like, man, you sure he. He, I was like, so we started trying to find out who his daddy was and who his granddaddy was. Yeah. And he they don't. Me 14 and they don't necessarily look like you know. We'll, we'll get uh, sixteen and seven. They get doing our fourteen two other things. You got a little brother. Huh? So you got you got the full to speak. You got a brother. No, I'm not. You, I'm just. I was just. I, I understand what you're saying. No, I, I, I. For some reason, I thought once I got into this information about the God of Israel, I was like, no, nah, Bruce Lee. I don't think was. Uh, 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 get, get that right there in uh, Samuel sixteen and seven. I was like, he must Samuel, be. I was like, he, he must be an Israelite. I was like, he, nah, he. I think he was an Israelite for some reason, you yeah. know. And you know, so we started doing some little research and stuff like that. But we didn't probably go as deep as you went with it. Um, yeah. So that that answered my question though uh, about Ezra and stuff. It was a reason why those children didn't get put out or slaughtered or whatever. I don't know if they got killed or whatever, but yeah, because basically they chose to go with their mother. They basically were exiled out and they left the mother. They chose to go with the idols, the idols, yeah, the idol gods. They, they, they could have said, they said, nah, we're going to keep the commandments. But right. they said, nah, we're going to go with our mother. We're going to believe in Buddha. We're going to believe in, in, in Murdoch. We're going to believe in Poseidon. We're going to believe in whoever. We, we're not down with that. And they left on their hedonistic ass way. Hey, man, I just want to say this. The Israelites are the baddest men on this planet when it comes to knowledge and teaching. I, I ain't have seen nobody do it like y'all do it yet. Yeah. Not no right. church or nothing. Yeah. Sister, they don't know how to break this book down like that, man. Yeah. You look at them Afro you can go, dudes, you, you, man. They, they, they don't come out and teach. You, you, Saw you, Netter and Polite and all that. They said in 2013 they were going to start coming out and teaching, but they haven't, though. They yeah. don't teach our people nothing, man. But the universities don't even know how to break this. When you go to the seminaries, the theological seminaries, that's, I'm talking about the high educated doctors yeah. into the Bible, the ones that's teaching, they don't even. <laughs> They don't know how to break this book down like Israelites do. No. They don't break it down, and they don't break it down right and accurate. Yeah, don't break it down. Like accurate. if I would ask one of them that, they probably wouldn't have had a good answer for. for that would have mangled it. God, God just loves. God just loves. End of story. God just loves. He just loves. He loves everybody. If you're not talking about that, then you're not talking about God. Blah blah blah. blah. Just some bullshit like that. You know, they would have said you're dismissed. If Satan is on you. The power of Christ compared. They would have just some shit like that, man. You know, but we're going to bring out the full truth. But that lets me know that is not, like hot. that's like, that's just, a, that is let me know that this book is designed for the Israelites to break down. Yeah. 
in the teach. And not no other group, no other group can break this book down. I'm, man, no other race, nationality breaks this book down and teach this book like Israelites can do it. You know, I've, yeah. I've seen none. Hey, I haven't seen any. I don't care if you can get, you can get all robbers, you can get, you can get any of them. Pat Sajak, whatever his name is, you can get. They don't break this book down like y'all. Man. So that one that made the book about the Anunnaki, uh, 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 Sicily. <laughs> you can't get another one, man. They go into all kind of other philosophies, or they do touch in the Bible. They misconstrue the Bible and they break it down inaccurate. Yes, break yeah. it down totally wrong. So that, that is a beautiful thing. So that's just let me know this book is is confined specifically for it was meant specifically for Israelite the Israelite nation to break down and teach because no other people can do it. The Chinese people don't. The ones that you know, the Chinese people who get converted. I don't know. Someone maybe is like I'm talking about the ones that's not Israelites. Uh, they don't uh, even. That's true, right there. Some are, but some aren't. Yeah, that's true. And but the ones that's not, they don't, they don't know how to, they don't know how to teach this Bible right. Yeah, got that, got that down, get it down. And if they do teach it right, <laughs> they got it from other, they got it from Israelites. Yeah. When they are teaching it correct, they probably got that information from Israelites. Some yeah. down, somewhere down the line, or through some other source like that. I was watching on YouTube, watching the videos, but you do got some meetings that actually watch the videos. You watch the videos. So, uh, you know, I just want to say, I just want to say that. The Israelites, they they teach this. They teach. I learn I learned more from Israelites within two hours than I did from a whole ministry for a whole year, yeah. a, a Christian ministry for a whole year. And two I, scriptures, I, sing and dance, pass the collection plate around, and if they are like a good good sized church, then they'll go ahead and uh and who wants uh free bologna sandwiches at the end and and and, and grits, then they can go on. Two hours. Yeah. I'm just gonna say a whole day to give them benefit of the doubt. A whole day of listening to teachings of Israelites, they able to break down more scriptures and give them more understanding and wisdom about those scriptures within one day than I probably got from a whole year of ministry at a regular Christian church. That's right. That's right. So you know, I praise the Most High for that. They get that out in uh, Samuel 16 and 7. First Samuel 16 and 7. Call it. This is First Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his uh, countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. That's right. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the, on the heart. Yeah, the heart is basically uh, the soul. And by definition, the soul is the intermeshment of the spirit of the Most High that gives you life, that animates you. And the physical flesh, the physical body, your physical soul and elements and molecules and atoms together combined. Because you can have a body, but it's dead. It's like the soul inside it. It's just a dead carcass on the ground. Once that light comes into it, you're an actual living being. So the Most High, he looked up upon the, the heart, the inner soul, and even to the into the inner conscience. That's how you know that you're an Israelite or not. Because you are going to be from the platform spirit of your father. Because the seed don't come from a woman. Women don't produce seeds. Women don't produce sperm cells. So that, that sperm cell is going to come from the father, and that's what contains the spirit. See, the father, he has the batter, but the woman has the oven, man. What's going to come out of that oven is a batter from the father. It ain't going to be half oven, half chocolate cake. Nah, it's going to be a chocolate cake. Or it's going to be a red velvet cake. Or it's going to be whatever the hell it is, basically. All right? Uh, get real quick at Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Man, I'm serious, man. Everybody, right now... Need to be right here. Yeah, they should. And listen to what you're saying, man, because they're not gonna get this unless they go to an Israel God church or something like that. But if they go to church tomorrow, I'm when they go to a little bit of out that so called church. When they go to church tomorrow, uh, they're seven, not gonna uh, they, they're not gonna hear this. Get seven man. to six. Get seven to six for now. They're not gonna probably teach this. Most likely. I oh, give them a bit of a some of them might, but on average, you're not gonna hear it, man. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna go ahead and bring out the example with Peter and uh and the claw. They had the four corners of the other cloth, the blanket or whatever, right? That uh, in a vision he saw, and they're gonna say that uh that that when it contained all those uh, unbondable creatures that brought of abominable things, or how had all those unclean animals, and the Lord was saying to eat, they're gonna take that and say that you can eat pork, you can eat swine, you can eat catfish and shrimp and all that. But that was talking about brothers like this right here. That was talking about brothers that are so called like me and you, that are so called mixed and all that, that the average Israelite. Like a, like a more so dark skinned brother would have an issue. Like, man, well, they, they, they great grandma was white. She, they, she was Italian or Irish or something. You know, so how are they Israelites? 
that was referring to us. First, I were deemed to be unclean, but the Lord said for Peter to go eat, like go deal and suck with them. With I'm, the glad you, I'm, I'm glad you're on this. Uh, I'm glad you're on this. So, so, so when the, when the unclean animals, when he says, I think he says something about, see, another thing too, they don't ever bring out. Yeah. Peter didn't never eat of anything. He, 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 he didn't. didn't he didn't even eat of anything of that thing uh, yeah. when that came down. Yeah, was, he didn't eat anything. Religion. So they don't. They don't mention. It was all spiritual. Yeah. spiritual allegory. Uh, now, so I thought about that. I was like, okay, yeah. yeah. I think she might be your tribe. <laughs> <laughs> she might be a wild ass bitch. All right, sir. <laughs> Fired up off that uh, that McGinnis man. She has a rod. Blue top. That McGinnis punch. Hey, old motherfucker, don't talk to that dumb cunt. Yeah, that's how my grandmother was though. In Jamaica, man. <laughs> so, so, so they don't, they don't, they don't. You say you can eat anything. But they don't realize. They don't say. Well, they don't realize that Peter did not even eat anything of that, of that yeah, out of that vision uh, or dream. Nope. He didn't even eat anything. He sure didn't, man. So, so you don't got no example of Peter, Paul, nor Christ eating any pork, anything. Yeah, it is say in, in the next verse, tw the twenty eighth verse, and, and Peter grabbed a handful of uh, a frog, a fried frog leg, and just started stuffing his mouth and yep. grabbed the hot sauce. No, nah, not it, in it, there. It, it don't say that, man. You don't can't find nowhere where Christ ate any pork. Yeah, and, and, or and any lobster. It didn't say Christ grew weak, so he just he just had to have him a piece of that catfish. He needed that catfish, boy. He it, not, is, it didn't say that. Mm -hmm. And then he when he, and when he multiplied the food, he didn't multiply pork. Yeah. He multiplied fish. We can eat fish. Yeah. And it wasn't catfish either. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He multiplied bread, loaves of bread, and, and fish. He didn't multiply catfish, lobster. Yeah. Pork. Did Goddamn, it? Uh, shark. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, so, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't make fried eels and all that like they do out there in China and Japan. That's why we need Israelites who know the word like yourself and many others to show us that what those scriptures actually really mean and not to be using those scriptures to cause us to be put in bondage to sin that's right you know what i mean that's right brother you're on point you're on point with because there was because we thinking like when we was in church when we was going to church we thinking oh we can eat anything just pray over it yeah but that scripture was taught wrong to us man it was taught wrong to us on purpose. so i'm sick i'm wondering why i'm sick growing up as a child because i'm eating the wrong stuff yeah Wonder why people got high blood pressure and diabetes. From the Negroes to the Latin tribes to the natives to the Irish to the Scottish foreigners. While our people are all fat, the women are out of shape. They ain't got no ass because they, all that ass is in their belly and all that, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. You know? And they don't if breastfeed. Yeah, breastfeed. If you want the women to have our women to have nice figures and nice shapes, you gotta breastfeed those babies. Yeah. And they don't see they don't be teaching us that though. But the Israelites, man, they be getting into all that type of teaching. Yeah. They so, get into all that. To. You feed your child damn mercury, man, by giving them that Gerber's. You give them mercury and, and, and pork and probably even fetus material. Stem cells and shit from aborted fetuses. That's you gross. give them that Gerber's. Gross. You're supposed to give them that milk. That's how the child grows to be stronger and natu naturally more healthier, man. Yep. You know, to, to come with, with be, a full figure. They be thick when they young. They be thick when they young. They don't got like little small wrists like I got and shit. You know, they, 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 their brains are more functioning. And their bones are strong. Bones are strong. Bones are strong. They don't break. Their bones don't get broken when they teenagers and stuff. Uh, you give your child that that baby pool, they're gonna be they're gonna be messed up, man. They might be plagued with, with being autistic and other other mental conditions. Yes, sir. You know, that shit probably has some effects to be a little tad bit, man. I'll be kind of stuttering sometimes. I get kind of a little nervous. I'll be stuttering real bad sometimes. It'd be kind of hard to get words out. Why? Because my simple minded mother and my grandma was giving me damn gerbils instead of just saying, "Well, let me breastfeed my child." But they want to complain and say, well, my, my nipples going to look messed up afterwards. My breasts going to look all funny and, and sucked up. You're supposed to breastfeed your children. No matter how your titties look, it, breastfeed it, your child. Plus Stop being all vain and shit. Well, you, not only that, you, that too, is like, yeah, right. See, the thing about this is your breasts, you got to get back in shape. That too. Yeah. You just can't. And eat healthy. Don't, don't, eat healthy. Your, yeah. your breasts will come back. After you have a baby, you are lazy and shit. Yeah. You don't want to do that. You're going to sit on the house. I'm tired. I did my work of life. Get your ass back in that gym. And they got certain, and they got, and they got certain type of um, natural creams that you can put on your stomach, where you will lose all those wrinkles and stuff and all yeah. those stress marks. Yeah. They got that. They, they got stuff all, but well, that stuff you can lose that. Shea butter. The Israelites invented back in Africa. Shea you butter. can put that on your, you can put that on your breast. You, you, you can lose all those stress marks and stuff. Yeah. 
You just gotta, you just gotta wanna. We can stop. We just cannot be being lazy. We gotta stop being lazy, yeah. man. Yeah. Get that uh get that Deuteronomy seven and six. This is Deuteronomy seven and six. Read the more louder, bro. This is Deuteronomy seven and six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's right, the Lord he made the nation of Israel. The twelve tribes of Israel to be a nation of people better than all people above the people on the earth. To be above means that they're beneath you, meaning you're greater than them. You're more advanced than them. You're superior than them. And that's how you know who Israelites are, man. Because the so far Negroes and Latinos are the most athletic people upon the earth. Some of the most popular, famous people when it comes to entertainment. Everybody likes them. Everybody loves them. But you could discern out of that as well, too, the Israelite foreigners. But they'll do the same thing when... Typically, a Caucasian is not able to do shit like that, do a 360 or 720 dunk. Or you have an East Indian that's breakdancing and shit. You know, or you have... Uh, Some Asians breakdance too. Yeah, the ones that do breakdance. B-boys, B-boys. They, they, it'd be B-boy and breakdancing? Mm -hmm. They're Israelites, man. They probably is. They, they, I they never are. thought about they that. Are. I, know, I didn't think about that. The and all of them, they are. They're, they're, they're Moabites. They're so-called Moabites. They're really Rubenites among the Moabites. It's like Bruce Lee. Because if you got that spirit to do those things superior like the Negro does... That outdoes all the other nations naturally among the majority of them. That makes you an Israelite. You be able to dance real good with soul, salt, and rhythm. You ain't no white boy. You ain't no Caucasian devil. You're not an Edomite. Mm -hmm. You be able to dance on point real good, man. You're an Israelite. Along your dad's genealogy, along your father's line, there is a so-called black man that got it in with a little, you know, snow buddy like that over there. And I'll come forth later, five generations on the line. You got a brother like this. A brother looks like that because. They had not stopped procreation with their woman. And that's why they had to look what they looked like. You know? Get uh get Dan Daniels nine and seven real quick. Daniels so, nine and seven. Can I say this? Can I, you why since you on that on that scripture right there? Oh, which one? The scripture you just did. Uh, seven, seven and six. So we shouldn't be fighting for equal rights. I mean to be I mean excuse me, so not equal rights. Um just a lot of our people want to be equal with Yeah, well, they want to be equal in this place. We don't both be fighting for trying to be equal with them. Like, yeah. well, we're equal. Everybody's been made equal, created equal, or made equal. So that's scripture saying that's not true then. That's not true. Our, yeah, that's true. Our people, want, they want to go ahead and be equal with Caucasians, with Edomite devils. They want to be equal with the Arabians and East Indians and everybody else. But the Most High naturally made that to not be true, like we just read in the scripture. The reason why people want to have that mindset is because they got Stockholm Syndrome. They know but a bunch of, of um, <laughs> Uncle Ben's and Aunt Kissy's, man. A bunch of Uncle Tom's and Aunt Jemima. Mm -hmm. They love their oppressor. They love being weaker than their oppressor. They like to be submissive, especially all women. And since our men are taught by women nowadays, a lot of people are are led by single parents or predominantly mothers. They have that motherly vibration, that motherly touch, that spirit of the mother on them. So now, so now the men of our nation come down there, you know, bisexual, not homosexual, and to be one of the submissives to the so-called white man, and to these other nations. They want to be equal or beneath them. They really, they really feel that way. Oh, I'm, I'm equal. I'm equal to uh, <laughs> I'm equal to Timmy. Or I'm equal to uh, to uh, to Abdul and shit, man. They they want to fit in with society and just be normal. But we supposed to stand out though. We supposed to be superior and greater than all the rest. That's and like you said. That's what the Most High naturally made. You can't change what the Most High made. If the Most High made it, it is what it is. You know. Mm -hmm. This is Deuteronomy 14 and two. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The word holy in Hebrew is kodash, which means to be separate. It means to be a part of. What makes it holy is the keeping of the 600 plus commandments or laws. The holy law that was given to Moses down to the nation of the 12 tribes of Israel. Which is the moral law, the dietary law, the ceremonial law, and the dietary law. Those are the laws, 600 plus laws that makes it holy. It makes it separate from the other nations. Why are we separate from them? Because we've been given the laws. We're not, well, you know, nowadays we are, but in the ancient world, we weren't putting tattoos on our skin, cutting in our skin. Like those Africans do in East Africa, and like those other uh, heathens do out there in the outback and in the aboriginal. Those Hamites, those Japhites, you know? Our people are, are not supposed to do incest. In the ancient world, we weren't doing incest. But in the ancient world, the heathens were. To this day, the heathens are. They're having sex with their aunties, with their grandmas, with their grandpas, and all that wicked, evil shit, man. 
But naturally with Israel, we're made to be set apart from them. That's what the word holy means. Okay. Continue. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. The word peculiar means to be a special people, a uniquely special people. The word peculiar means to be so special that you have a unique characteristic about yourself that no one else has. And that's what Israel is. That scripture right there proves that the so-called white Caucasian so-called Jew are imposters. Pursuant to Revelation 2 and 9, 3 and 9, and Ezekiel 36 chapter, verse 4 to verse 5, verse 1 to verse 4, or about verse 5 where it ends. That proves that they're basically Edomites, they're Idumians, they're Caucasians. Because the Lord, he said he's going to make Israel, Israel to be in a special people. I see Michael Jordan jumping from the free throw line to dunk the basketball. I see the best in sports, the tribes of Israel, predominantly among Judah and among uh, certain other particular Latin tribes in MMA and boxing and all that, man. So when you see them in that atmosphere, how come the so-called white Caucasian Jew is not in that position? He's not there, man. The sons of Esau, the Amalekites, which are the so-called Jews, the imposter wannabe Jews out there uh, in California that run Hollywood, that run all the banking, all the banking systems throughout the whole entire world that are currently within the land of Israel right now, claiming to be Israelis and all that, you don't see them as the best boxers, the best MMA fighters, the best cage fighters, the best basketball players, the best football players, track stars, and the greatest athletes, and the greatest movie actors, man. They're not in that position. Still with Steven Spielberg, he, he's he just filming and producing the movies. He's not actually in the movies. Like uh, like you could have uh, uh, Spike Lee or another Israelite filming their own movie and playing the movie real good, you know? You had Quentin Tarantino, who's really an Israelite. He he uh, uh, was started his own movie, Just the Don. He played a pretty cool, decent part. He played his weird ass self in real life with a little bit of spunk and all that in this movie. But that's not that's not with those Edomites, so called Jews, man. But they're not the Lord chosen people. Ain't nothing special about them. They were special. Deuteronomy 7 and 6 and Deuteronomy 14 and 2 would apply to them, but it don't. Uh, go ahead to Daniel's 9 and 7. You was going to say something else too, brother? Cause that's the thing right here, man. Mosai, he's making it to where he's causing such of a glorious thing to prosper. That now we're at the point, we're at the point in this truth that we're getting close to the end. And the Lord, the Lord wants to glorify himself by this, by this method right here. He's gonna give us salvation, even though we don't deserve salvation. We went off in an ancient world and we're still going off to the day. Even brothers in the truth, we go off from time to time, sometimes on purpose, sometimes from accident. Sometimes we don't know that we go off, but we go off though. We're not perfect. We're still in this flesh. We're still being attacked by demons. Ain't no brother out here stronger than demons, man. The demons are way stronger than us because they're, they're, they're fighting from a spiritual plane, another spectral existence that's outside our own in another dimension. We're, we're not full spiritual beings. As they say, the humans only utilize 10% of their brain or something like that, man. So guess what? The demons are way more strong than us. What the Lord is going to do He's going to bring the foreigners, the confusion of faces, and they're being given salvation as well, too. Of making an example, like he said he would back in, uh, I believe it's uh, Rome. You got that right there? Uh, Daniel 9 and 7. This is Daniel's 9 and 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel. So basically the whole entire 12 tribes have confusion of faces. I mean, Judah has confusion of faces. Look at Chris Humphreys and um and Blake Griffin, the basketball star. You know, you could tell that that they're so called uh just so called Negroes, the mulatto. We look at Chris Humphreys, he kinda look like a white boy. He got like the golden curly looking hair, the greenish bluish eyes. Blake Griffin he real light like skin tone. He real light like skin tone. He got the features. But I remember one time a brother who's a very powerful brother in the spirit thought he was an Edomite at first. No, nah, you can't tell that he's just a light skinned Jay. You even got the fusion of face among Judah. You got that uh one basketball player, I don't know what team he plays with now. But I think uh D Will, you know what I'm talking about, right? I think Darren Williams. He used to play for the Jazz. I think he went to the Knicks. He had a daughter. His daughter, uh he had a daughter with a so called white woman. His daughter came out looking like an Edomite. But she really, uh, from the tribe of Judah, she a Judite, though. You know, she looks like an Edomite. And just because that brother is so light-skinned, that's how his child to come out to look. You got the confusion of face among all Israel, among uh, Benjamin and Levi. Like, my father and my dad, my, my father, 
he could my father he might be from the tribe of Levi. I don't know. I don't know exactly. But from my understanding, that's what we, what we believe. And among the Levites, you got a whole bunch of Levites that look like Caucasian, but they're not Caucasian. Go out there to uh to Louisiana. You know the tribe of Levi, right? The so called Haitian. You go out there to Louisiana, you had the sixteen hundreds when uh when New Orleans was first founded, it was found by so called black men, so called Moors that came out of France. It came from France to Haiti and, and they brought a lot of so called Haitian slaves. And they were black men that owned slaves. They brought a lot of Haitian slaves and brought them to New Orleans. Where strategically they released them as being slaves and made them free men of color to increase the population of black men that were free out there in New Orleans to combat against the high amount of French Caucasian men that are out there. You see among the Caucasian Edomites that were that were under the nationality of being French, they were more lenient as opposed to the English, American, and British Edomites who had Negroes as slaves nonstop. Among the French Edomites, you were able to buy your freedom if you wanted to. But among, of course, Judah and Benjamin, they couldn't do that. Their slave masters were real strict. So you had a lot of Levites that were out there in New Orleans, and when they had brought a, a, a population of immigrant women from France and Spain, those Levites, those Haitian men that were free, and those black French so-called Moors, they were procreating with those French Edomite women. And what came forth were a whole bunch of, of, of basically sons and daughters that were mulatto. They had, uh, in return, reproduction with those Edomite women. The sons and daughters that came out afterwards were not mulatto. They were called octoroons and quadroons. They were basically so-called by DNA uh, testing. They were, they were like one-eighth one eighth, uh, uh, black or whatever. They were predominantly white. So now you got Creoles out there that look like Caucasians, but they ain't nothing but Levites. You look at the example of their forefathers that are out there in Haiti. They're dark as cold down there, man. But still, even though the sons today out there, they are in New Orleans, they're Creole. They look like Caucasian. They look real pale, like almost albino. They're still Jake. They're still Israelites. And they spirit bear witness, man. You know? You got uh uh you got uh, uh Adrian Marcel, he's so called Creole. He ain't no terror, he can sing his ass off, man. And by the way, a terror is when your your father is a heathen and your mother is an Israelite, but you still kind of look like an Israelite, like Bob Marley. All right, and his daughter, uh uh not Bob Marley. Uh, Lenny Kravitz and his daughter, uh, 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 Zoe Kravitz, man. Those are terror. Those are so-called Jew Edomites, man. Though they look black. But you got Adrian Marcel, for example. He's an actual Israelite. You got uh, Little Fizz from B2K. He's an Israelite, man. He ain't no terror. Okay? Uh, uh, read, uh, read, the, read the rest of it again. Well, not bad, read the rest of it. Okay, just have it. You already read it? Uh, we don't think. This is Daniel 9 and 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of face, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, and that are far off. Through all the countries whisper that thou hast with us. All the countries would have died driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against the word another word for trespass meaning it means to transgress it means to sin against the most high that's why i said the most high cast for all the countries you know why let me see real quick the reason why the most high had put israel into all the countries and he gave them the appearance of the confusion of faith <laughs> that's what that means like, for example, this brother right here, that's what that means, the confusion of faith. He don't look like an Israelite, but he's a confusion of faith. From from Israel, from Judah down to Israel, the whole entire Torah tribe. The, the Mexicans look like a bunch of uh, uh, Samoans and Arabs mixed together. Puerto Ricans, they range from appearance like me and you, to even a, a dark Negro appearance, to even some of them look like white boys. But there are people, though. They just look like cheat seed treasure boy Jer. That picture of the false image of the Lord. They all look like him, but they still be Puerto Ricans though. You got Cubans that look white with, with green and blue eyes and blonde hair. But for example, you know Pitbull, right? The 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 the, the rap artist that's uh from Florida. He's an artist. He uh made that song with uh with Little John back in the day. He made a couple of songs. Was that that song Shot Shot Shot? He made that with uh Little John? Uh I think so, man. 
you got an artist named Pitbull. He's cute, but he looks white. But he ain't nothing but a nigga inside his heart, man. He, I guess he was known back in the day for getting out there with uh with them ghetto street cubes and shit and doing doing work, doing like little mafia work and all that. But you look at him, you like, man, he looks like I can eat him. I you can hear him rapping and all that. He ain't nothing but a nigga. His epitome is a nigga. He real ghetto, man. So that proves that you got a more than confusion of face. You got these Israelites that look like these other races. Only way you can really discern it is by trying by the spirit, or if you're on that spiritual level, you can discern it when you see them. The songs are all about women from other places, how much he likes them. So. I ain't add, add more to that, because that's true, man. All you, all you rap about, you rap in English and Spanish about, you know, getting pussy. Come on, man, that, that's, Israel, that's an Israelite thing. The program, when to get woman, and one to the papa. That's not in Esau's nature. Esau wants little boys and shit, man. He wants little boys and, and cross dresses and shit. When Esau first started out, though, he was married. He had two, three, four wives. He probably doing some nasty shit with them. You know, remember he married a Canaanite yeah. woman? Yeah. And then he married an uh, Israelite woman. Yeah. He probably doing some nasty stuff with them. He probably doing some very nasty stuff with them. Like he doing this porn flicks and all that. You know, that's Esau's nature, is to be a, a nasty, sick freak. You want to do things that that are that are not seemly, that are not that are not appropriate, that are sexually converted. That's Esau's forte. You a fan of Pitbull? Yeah, I listen to him. Yeah. Yeah, let me see your phone real quick. You got 4G on TV or you got 4G? 4G right back. Do your gigabytes run out? Right back. We're going to cut this video real quick, then we're going to restart the video.